I'm a big fan of blasters that look like an MP7. This is such a cool looking blaster. This is the F-Tech 1 made by Foam Technician, and this blaster is beautiful. This is a super high powered Springer that delivers very accurate and powerful hits. This blaster in particular, I was getting over 200 FPS. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how this blaster is put together, basically any issues that I had while building it, and then we're gonna look at its performance outside. So let's jump right into the video. So the F-Tech one can be found on Etsy. This is a kit that you can purchase. I believe you can either purchase a hardware kit, you can get the STLs. I think you can also buy these things pre-made. I opted in to get the, uh, the STLs and the hardware kit because I have 3D printers. So this is one that I built. Now, what is it about the MP7 aesthetics that I really like? Well, it's definitely the forward grip. Big fan of this. This collapsible stock, which makes like a nice compact kind of kind of oozy looking feel to it. And if you need that added shoulder support, it just comes right out. I'm a fan of having magazines that drop out of the pistol grip because it can just come out, it's out of the way. You don't have to worry about it up here or back here. In addition, this blaster is completely lined with Picatinny, so there's a lot of options you can do with this thing. It's worth mentioning that this forward pump is not what comes with the kit or the STLs. What came with it is this. This is fine, I really like this thing. But I, I just got this off the Stripe Knockout Kit and I really liked it and I thought it looked really cool to be able to kind of fold that down. Now right off the bat, I wanna mention a few things about the build for this blaster. Number one, the provided instructions were phenomenal. Foam Technician did an outstanding job in detailing on how to build this. In addition, he offers a full explanation on how to print the parts. It's worth noting that when you purchase blasters, sometimes they are not uh, orientated in good ways to allow for very good prints. So uh, this one, I could say this blaster in particular, Foam Technician put a lot of time and effort into figuring out good ways to print these and it turned out really good. Some of the issues that I personally have had, and this is something more pertaining to the filament I've been using. I've been print, I print a lot of stuff in PETG, and as of late, I've been using uh, Hatchbox Pet G, and it seems to be very brittle at times, and I have had quite a few cracks occur. So a lot of this I had to go back and reprint in PLA, and then also switch to ABS in some parts. It's just good to keep that in mind. For the outer shell work, uh, I did have an issue with the inside here. I had a elephant foot, which is when the filament kind of pushes down on the bed too much, and it created a little bit too much of material. So when I primed forward, when the spring slammed forward, I actually caused my front end to shatter. Uh, that was just all because of me and not cleaning my parts. So pay close attention to this, this forward area. Make sure you have a lot of uh, tolerance in there and clearance when putting this together. So that combined with the fact that I used PETG up here and it wasn't really good PETG, I'm, I'm starting not to use Hatchbox PETG anymore, but I just wanted to make mention of that. The main takeaway is if you want to attempt to build this yourself, take a look at that, that print printing instructions and just follow those. As you can see here, I have a different barrel. This is uh, some updated files that Foam Technician has released. Uh, it seems like he is constantly updating these files. And uh, this, this barrel in particular is a suppressor. Another thing I'm looking to get is a scar barrel to increase my accuracy. So let's go ahead and talk about the blaster's performance a little bit. Now, because this is a, a much harder hitting blaster, I wanted to take it to a 50 foot range. And I found out in my property, I actually have a good little back alley that goes up to like 55 feet. Because of that, my range footage is a little bit different this time. It's in that back alley. But as you can see, this thing hits pretty well at 50 feet. Now, the first set of cups I set up was actually at 30. So that's my typical how, how far I shoot. So this is at another 20 feet from that first group of cups. And as you can see, I nailed that first, that first group, uh, but I had a little bit of trouble on the second one. I would say that for this thing to be extremely accurate, uh, I highly encourage you to invest in a SCAR and, and maybe kind of work with that. Because uh, without a SCAR, just with a basic barrel, it's somewhat accurate at 50 feet, but I can see after 100 feet, you're probably gonna have some trouble. So the nice thing about this platform is there's a lot of custom, there's a lot of optimization you can do in here, and that's really amazing. You can change your springs, you can change your barrels, you can pop this shell apart pretty easy. It's not as quick as like a hummingbird. Uh, there are, you know, uh, there are several screws in each one to take the, the outer shells off, but it's not too hard to work on. Now FPS, 
as I mentioned earlier, it was hitting over 200 FPS. I think it was even going up to like 230, 210, 220. Very hard hitting blaster. And just so people are aware, I, I opted for the 16 kilogram spring and I was able to hit over 200 FPS consistently. I think I would probably put it in an average around 215. So that's really cool for something that, you know, you just slap together and good to go. My local events are 150, so I'm probably gonna look to downsize the spring a bit and maybe uh, do some work with a scar barrel, which will also drop the FPS a little bit and increase accuracy. But I think this is probably gonna be my go-to. I live pretty close to Silver Fox Industries and obviously we love Silver Fox Industries print qualities and their links are flying off the shelves but I wanted to have something a little bit different because I see, I don't see a lot of these in my area. So that's kind of why I went with this. I look forward to using this in my local wars. I hope it serves me well and I highly recommend it. But before we wrap up, I just want to put out a couple of my gripes with this blaster. The main thing is just the screws and the hardware kit. I'm a huge fan of brass inserts and M3 hardware. I think uh, when I built the Hummingbird, it really spoiled me. And as I was putting this together, I kept wishing some of the stuff was M M3, M4 or whatnot, just different hardware than the provided Nerf screws. Because when I look at this platform, this is something I wanna open up and switch out springs. I wanna change the shells. I wanna put on different accessories, pull Picatinny off, you know, I wanna do lots of work on this, but those screws provided in the kit, they are quickly stripping out. I've opened this up several times and some of my screws are just unusable at this point. So just my only, my only real gripe with this is just the provided hardware. I know why that is chosen. It's, it's due to cost, you know, to keep the overall hardware kit cheaper. The cheap Nerf type of hardware screws are just, they're almost free, they're very cheap. And when you go to M3 hardware with brass inserts, you get, it, it now, drives that cost up. So I understand that. I would just love to see some type of offering with maybe some files that could allow the brass inserts. I would love to see something like that so that I could easily service this blaster and maintain it, swap out parts and easily go in and out of it. Cause like, I'm, I'm a big fan of this platform and I foresee myself doing a lot with it. And so I might go see if I can add my own brass inserts and kind of make my own thing in here but I will have to see how that goes. I'm Dr. Flux, and that pretty much wraps up my review of the F-Tech 1 by Foam Technician. If you can't tell already, I love this blaster. It is beautiful. I love how it turned out. Let me know in the comment section, is this something that you're looking to build or get a hold of? I think this is a very solid platform to go with. A lot of people are, are jumping into the Lynx platform and Talon Claws and Caliburns and whatnot. I think this is a very unique offering. So I'm glad to see other stuff out there. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video to help grow this channel. I wanna thank you for watching, and as always, happy foam flinging. Really shouldn't shoot that in here.